Zach Voorhees, the big Google whistleblower, the biggest data dump, the Ed Snowden, but other Google uh, folks are calling him a big tech. But you were just asking me, and I, I thought about telling the story, but I never told it. Uh, if we've ever had Kanye West on the show, you know, I know he's a listener. I've talked to folks in his, his entourage and all that. And we were talking like a year ago, or more than a year ago, to his security people. And they were like, well, does Jones have guns on top of the buildings and all this stuff where I've joked around about that? And, you know, black helicopters and stuff. And, and, and like, uh, the producer goes, oh, yeah, you know, our, 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 our security can beat up your security. They actually took it serious. I guess that's south side Chicago. So it's just, but obviously his security already didn't want him to come on the show. But, but here's the thing. My audience built the Trump platform for him to launch on. So, see, we're not trying to get into the system. We built the whole new launch, and, and a lot of others did as well. So I like being the guy in the wilderness. I'm, I don't even care if, if somebody like Kanye West comes on the show. He already has courage. He's already doing a great job. I get all these calls, and we talk to all these really high-powered, big, famous people. And they go, oh, I listen to the show all the time. I love the show, but I'm scared to come on. And, but please don't tell people. I was just listening yesterday. That's fine. It's okay. Because we see what you're doing in testimony to Congress. We see what you're doing when you get the chance out there on the national news. We see what all these good folks like, you know, Kurt Russell and, and everybody else are, you know, saying when they get a chance to go on TV. So it's all there. You don't need to come on the show. You just go out and say it in the world, and we all know what's going on. It's not about getting the credit. It's about beating these dehumanizers. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, and so um, hopefully Kanye will come on your show one day because um, he needs to talk to the people and, you know, tell your audience like why he did what he did and why he decided to break from um, the the script and tell the truth. Well, about everybody the media. knew Trump was super nice and had a lot of great opportunities with black folks and was always very, very you know, uh, nice and opened up golf courses 45 years ago when they were only white and all the rest of it. Everybody knows that. So the black rappers and stuff really feel guilty that they've been crapping on Trump like like uh, Snoop Dogg says Trump's the greatest guy ever. Now Trump's a Nazi. And, and so it's, it's just Kanye that isn't a coward. Yeah, it, that's right. So we thank Kanye for uh, telling the truth. And, yeah, he's already um, done what he needs to do. It, it's, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. Should we take some calls? Yeah, we're going to do it, but I went too long. So we got Vox Day coming up, and I promise Ryan and Ronnie first when we come back. Uh, tell us some of the topics, the reason you wanted to get Vox Day on. So the reason why I want to get Vox Day is because first I want to tell the audience about ideological subversion and how they create these SJWs. And then I want to talk about the tactics of taking down the thought police. And so the author of that uh, manual is Vox. So I'm really happy to. SJW is always lie. SJW is always double down. Two books we carry both of them, along with his great comic books at Infowarsstore dot com. Yeah, I recommend. And, and no everyone. reviews on that because we were selling it, then we weren't selling it. Now we're selling it again. I just put the new order in today, but uh, you'll get them very, very quickly. It's a top seller at Amazon. There's a lot of people that read this book, so I recommend it for everyone to to check it out. And uh, if you don't want to buy it, see the excerpts, and then you're going to want to buy it. So smart stuff. So we'll get a look at this book on the other side with Vox Day and then your phone calls. So be patient. Ryan and Ronnie have already been holding. So we'll get to you and then we'll open the phones up again for more questions. Uh, Matt Bracken understands uh, we're going to commandeer at least 15 minutes in the next hour. So we have more time to take calls as well. If you have questions for my guest, uh, it will be about 30 minutes to get to your calls. But if you want to start racking those calls up, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539, specifically for our guest. Uh, Zach Voorhees, the big Google whistleblower. A uh, very rare chance to ask a, original, hard hitting questions directly uh, to somebody who the establishment does not want speaking out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back live broadcasting worldwide from the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas, in defiance of the globalist attempt to shut us down. Remember, you are the road, the bridge on which this bus is traveling on. You're the air in which this bird flies. Without you supporting us, we are not here. You are the info war. This is what you built. You're seeing the giant results of the human uh, desire for liberty and common sense. Box stays with us for two segments. I wanted to pop in because you were talking about his book helping really wake you up. We were selling it. And we weren't again. I don't know why we sell out of something. We never reorder it. We take it down. But, but uh, we've reordered it. It'll be here in a week. So get it at InfoWarsStore.com. SJWs always lie. And SJWs always double down. Put that lower third up. Again, Store. Uh, dot com today and that funds our operations so thank you all so uh let's we got two segments here and, and then vox has got to go let's get into the seminal book and why you think it's so important uh the reason why it's important is because if you don't understand how the left operates and has been indoctrinated in order to achieve uh cultural change then what's going to happen is that you're going to make a mistake and 
Uh, I'll give you an example. A lot of people think that they have to apologize and that if they apologize and like do an atonement that the problem's going to go away and what they get That's really empowering the jellyfish. It is because what they're looking for is that they're actually looking for your apology as a tactic so that they can um, parade the apology around and say, look, this person admits that they're a bad person. And then what they're going to do is they're going to use it to slime you and destroy you. And this happens over and over and over again. And so one of the most important lessons that I learned from SJWs always lie is never apologize to the left because they're not going to let you go there. It's just a tactic that they're going to use in order to uh, hurt you. Um, and, um, you know, and, and so, yeah, like, you know, Vox is here today and, uh, you know, he's better at telling his book than, than I am. So, um, and, and again, he's writing a playbook about their playbook. They admit all of this in their rules for radicals, uh, pledge to Lucifer. I mean, in the, 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 these are cold blooded manipulators and all the studies show it. The, the biggest thing I ever woke up to was like 10 years ago that even low level liberals know they're evil, know it's a scam and know they're just seeking power and, and, and trying to punch our buttons. So Vox. Well, hold on. I, I want to add to that. Uh, you said that like they, they pledge to Lucifer and people will not believe you. But if you want to verify what Alex Jones is saying, go and download Saul Linsky's Rules for, for Radicals and look at who he dedicated the book to. And you'll see that what Alex Jones is saying is 100% true. And then here's a question for the audience. Which presidential candidate recently, uh, that's been recently in the last three years, uh, did their dissertation thesis on Saul Alinsky tactics? Hillary. Okay, the ding, ding ding puzzle solved. Yeah, it was Hillary. So she 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 did her. Oh wait, sorry, that's the Socratic method. That's the Socratic method, but that's okay. It's the, yeah, so it's Hillary. Oh, it's we, we don't do breadcrumbs here. We just go right to the end. Yeah, but I mean, but you're right. People want to follow the breadcrumbs. Hey, Vox, thanks for popping in with this uh, big plug for your book. Wherever people get it, they should get it. It's a bestseller. But we sell it at InfoWarsStore.com. But it, it has woken a lot of folks up. They do always lie. Why do they always lie? Because the truth is anathema to them. And you know, I'd like to first of all say uh, thanks to Zach for writing what is probably the most powerful book review uh, I've ever seen of any of my nonfiction. Um, it's it's very inspiring to see that that people are taking what was written as a work of philosophy and turning it into a tactical operation manual. That's really encouraging. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, but for a period of about two years. Uh, SJW's Always Lie was actually the best-selling political philosophy book on Amazon, ahead of Machiavelli, ahead of Plato, ahead of Aristotle, and so forth. And the, the thing is that the more philosophically true your actions are, the more dedicated to the truth that you are, the more effective that your actions are going to be. And so, yeah, this was back, uh, back when SJW's Always Double Down came out, and it was interesting to see how uh, the, the top three bestsellers in political philosophy, ahead of Plato, ahead of uh, you know all the famous John Locke and Hobbes and so forth, <laughs> were Stefan Molyneux and I. But the, what Zach did was exactly right. He he waited, he gathered information, he did his research, and then he took his shot at the appropriate time, and that is what terrifies Google. That's what terrifies the, the various converged corporations, is that there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of people like Zach inside their operations. You know, a couple of years ago, or two years ago, I think, Google canceled a company-wide meeting because they didn't want me publishing their uh, notes from the meeting on my blog. They knew that I have... I mean, they know that I have a line directly into their communication system. But, you know, it's not Zach. There's, like I said, there's dozens of Googlers who do not appreciate what Google is trying to do. And there's a lot more and every so, day. Yes. Exactly. So, so Vox, uh, we're, we're going to get more next segment into the book itself. But expanding on this... Just as Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals is a technical manual, yours is, just to understand the, their mindset and just how nasty they are so we don't project humanity onto them because we have humanity. We need to realize just how nasty and, 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 and bottomless these people are. But 
specifically, what are you expecting just politically at this point to happen soon? Because things are getting crazy. They're getting crazier and crazier. I, I mean, this this thing is boiling over. Well, I think that the economic crash is coming soon. I think that we're looking at another situation. I think that we're basically in late 2007 and that uh and that's you know, the establishment's counter to nationalism you think is this no i don't think it's actually an intentional counter i think that the system is is creaking i mean when you've got interest rates actually going negative in germany and in other european countries you've got no i understand that but trump's trying to prop it up and, and people like Bill Maher on the left are openly in the four former Federal Reserve heads are running around screaming the sky's falling. I agree the system all the world screwed up in a bubble. But I mean, do we really want to pop it now? Because they want to blame it on Trump. Well, yes, but the thing is, it's going to it's going to pop while Trump is president because Trump is going to win in 2020. And there's no way that the. No, I agree with you. So how far can we kick it? We, we, but we want to kick it past 2020 so we get tr Trumplet in, right? I don't think it matters. I think that, you know, I per correctly predicted that Trump was going to win in 2016 uh, in fairly early 2015. Um, I said right after the election, uh, you know, we actually put up Trump slide 2020 shirts uh, the day after the election. Not because we were just trying to, you know, improve morale or anything, but because I was convinced that the Democrats simply don't have anyone who can even begin to compete with the man. We yeah, have the, the same analysis. So, so, so then looking forward to 2020, how do you see that the cards falling? Well, I think that Trump is going to, regardless of whether there is a uh, economic crisis or not, Trump is going to win uh, in 2020 and by a bigger margin than he did in 2016. And that's really, to, to bring it back to the Google situation, you know, that's where I actually discovered what was going on in Google because there were, uh, you know, they were running around demanding, and, and I'm sure Zach can testify to this, there were Googlers running around demanding that anyone who voted for Trump should be disemployed. Oh, that, that, that came out that the news. Should be, yeah. Talk about a cult. Right, exactly. Like, you can't work here if you're a Republican. Yeah, I mean. Well, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, you know, it, it, and they've got this like idea that if you are supporting a presidential candidate that you're engaging in wrong think and that therefore anything against you is justified because you are fundamentally a bad person. And so, you know, voting records are public, I believe, so they can come after you and it's a really scary situation. Well, that's like Castro publishing Trump donors. And then a bunch of them were his donors, too. Like, a lot of people just give to both sides. What an idiot. We'll be right back with Vox a Day. Stay with us. Listen, I could do 10 hours with both these guys. We got loaded phones and great questions. But I'd like to invite you back on as a regular guest. I know you showed some interest and want to do your own show. Absolutely. You're made for talk radio. Really smart guy. You get all the different angles of, of trying to get people to see how they're being manipulated from different perspectives. So... You know, me and Vox talked about, uh, Vox and I talked about him doing a show. We, we never got around to it. Maybe you guys should do a show together. It's just that I've been busier than a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. And so all these projects I want to launch haven't happened in the last few years because I've had 30-plus lawsuits. And you wouldn't hear in the news I've gotten 20-plus thrown out. Uh, and it's cost, you know, $5 million or whatever. But we're winning thanks to you. But it's been one hell of a fight. So please remember InfoWarsStore.com for all of your great nutraceuticals, books, T-shirts, films, you name it. Vox Day is our guest. Uh, and we've got him for one more segment. And we're going to take phone calls after that for our uh, guest here uh, in studio, Zach Voorhees. But, but, but finishing up, Vox, why your book's so important, how it's woken up so many, I would say, who are classical liberals like Zach to really see the cult programming and make them have a hard break with it. Because like you said, you were already having big questions before you read his book. You were already trying to figure out what was going on, but it, it, it really showed you the type of mental political affliction that has been basically engineered into this uh, to the minion class. Yeah, and I, I want to get to right at the heart of this. So, Vox, if you'll allow me to talk about your book. And we'll do another segment if we have to, but I swore to go to calls. Keep, keep going. All right, so um, there are eight main points in his book, and what I'm going to do is talk about them. So, uh, number one, recognize the attack. Remain calm and realize that very few friends and coworkers will help you. Okay, you're kind of in this fight for, for yourself. 
Um, second of all is don't try to reason with them. You are not dealing with rational people, but with raving beasts who will take every gesture of goodwill as a sign of weakness and will use everything they say you say yes. against them, okay? Yes. Against you. Um, one of the ways I defend against this is that whenever they want to talk to me in private, I always say, I'm going to record this conversation so that we have a clear record of what's being said. Guess what? It doesn't matter how powerful they are. They are scared to death of the cameras and them That's being That's exactly recorded. what I do when the fake reporters are here. But even in our meetings and stuff, you know, because I want stuff on record of what I said. Yeah, exactly. So do not apologize is number three, okay? Apologies are treated as evidence of guilt and invite intensified attacks, okay? This is something that's not intuitive. It's something that you have to realize. Oh, I wish I'd have read his book but when I was like, they'd say, stop saying uh, that... Uh, harass Sandy Hook families. And I said, I never did that. But if anybody is trying to do that in my name, don't do it. I apologize. That's when all hell broke. That's when it was the beginning of that whole shit storm that happened to you. Um, okay. So number four is accept your fate. Try to adopt a stoic attitude of indifference about outcomes. Focus simply on doing the right thing, which is to fight. Okay. I, I got to say, this sounds like my um, uh, manual, just how to be a man. That's what I've done politically. Yeah. And that's how you're successful. Exactly. This is the reason why it's a philosophy book. Okay. So, um, document their every word in action. So, you know, for what I did is I, I wanted to record them. That's, that's terrifying to them. Um, do not resign and don't do, so don't do the enemy's work for them because if you resign, then they're going to parade that out around as a surrender and that you admitted to being what they accused you of. Yeah, doing. don't quit. I'll make them fire you. Yeah. Fight, fight, fight. All right. This number seven is the most important. Okay. Make the rubble bounce. Basically, this means a counterattack. Do everything you can to raise the price of attacking you for your enemies and your employer. This is worth quoting at length. Whether That's what I did with Pepe the Frog. They spent a million and a half, and they got fifteen thousand dollars because the judge ordered us to settle, basically. And it was a it was a massive defeat for them. Exactly. So you want to spend a hundred thousand. You want to target the enemy at every opportunity. Hit them wherever they show themselves vulnerable. Play as dirty as your conscience will permit. Undermine them, sabotage them, and discredit them. Now, I didn't like, I wasn't malicious to Google before I left other than doxing them. But um, I'll say this, I, I, and I'm going to ask Vox this. We'll do one more segment. I know he's got to go too, but he's, he's offered to stay, but I got to go to the calls. Vox, I wouldn't use that term fight dirty i mean i know everybody knows what that means kind of underhanded if somebody started the fight and they're kicking your ass it's not dirty to punch him in the in the uh you know the testicles people would call that dirty in a boxing match because that's a you know square fight so but but i'm still kind of worried when, when we say dirty because i found dirty stuff can bounce back on you what do you mean by dirty i mean whatever <laughs> you use whatever works i'm a trained martial artist we don't worry about what the Marcus of Queensbury rules are, if someone comes at you, any tactic that they use against you is legitimately adopted and used against Oh, them. I totally so, agree. But nothing's dirty when you're fighting for your life and you didn't initiate. So I just think, what's a better word? Uh, fair game? First blood? I, mean, the, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't worry about those things. The, point, the, the, the reason that I said fight dirty is because people are... I'm trying to teach people to stop thinking about it in terms of what they think is fair. It's not about what you think is fair. It's about the situation. It's about what you Oh, I to totally do. agree with that. And I wasn't trying to split hairs and, here. And, and, and I want to add to that because this goes right into his uh, point it's just, number listen, eight. I could do a lot of dirty stuff and F some globalist over. I just don't do it because... It's, it's, it's not chivalrous, and I found that gives me some form of protection. But, 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 so, so, so I'm not, and I'm not saying you're immoral saying fight dirty. I think you're redefining for conservatives that tend to be very squeamish that, hey, you're fighting for your life. You need to start you know, kicking but, ass. No, but, but conservatives are wrong. Conservatives are weak. There's a reason why they call me Dark Lord. It's because we do whatever we need to do. <laughs> right. And a lot of people. Well, then let's expand it's on It's not this. necessarily wrong. It's just people like, oh, that wouldn't be a nice thing to do okay. to them. But well, it I didn't could know you be had justified. the nickname Dark Lord, but you wrote a good, you're a good guy, and I like having you on. So explain to me about the Dark Lord philosophy. It ends justifies well, the, the means. No, it's not that the end justifies the means. It's that you play by the rules of the game that you are are provided. That I you know, totally agree with, and so I don't think it's called fighting dirty. That's all I'm saying. They will call it fighting dirty. You don't. It doesn't matter what they say. I don't pay any attention to what the left says. No, no, whatsoever. I get it now. So you're 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 invoking terms like that on purpose to get people to stop being so squeamish. Exactly.
and and in number eight, what he says here is, um, don't act out of anger, don't initiate attacks, but when attack, respond with disproportionate, overwhelming force. That's what Trump does. That's what Trump does, and that's what I did. You know, I I react to whatever Google is going to do, and as a result, they think twice about what they're going to do to me, and so um, that is one of the most important points in this whole tactical operation is to respond with disproportionate, overwhelming force at every opportunity. Well, that's always what you got to do. That's what you always got to do. Mm -hmm. If they escalate, you they have to understand that you're going to escalate with them. You know, people often say, how come you don't lead with your best shot? How come you don't show your hand? And the reason is because if you lead with your best shot, then you've got nowhere to go. You've got no potential for escalation. And so the best way to prevent things from going you know, nuclear on both sides is to uh, just continue to maintain something in reserve. And Oh, uh, sure, you never go nuclear up front. More force. I mean, you don't want to go nuclear up front because that would cause a nuclear war using a, you know, I mean, an actual military uh, theater type situation. You'd want to use a lot of other things first. Exactly. But we're the only country ever to drop nuclear weapons, atomic weapons on people, and Japan found out. It's like, <laughs> you uh, sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. And I'm so sad for those Japanese folks following their emperor, but they found out what happened, and now they respect us. We'll be right back with Vox Day, Zach Voorhees. I'm Alex Jones. Your calls as well. Please stay with us. I want to see you become incredibly powerful. I want to see you unleash your human potential so that our progeny, in the future, we'll look back on us and celebrate us as victors. Species fails, we lose. Species goes next level, we all win. And I'm a winner. And I know you're a winner. Vox Day's our guest. Calls are coming up. We're going to host some of the next hour. Please hold callers. I respect you. I appreciate we're making some key points. Please don't forget, without viewers and listeners, we're not here. And we've got the best fish oil. We've got the best nootropics. We've got the best protein bars. We've got the best krill oil. We've got the best of whatever it is. 95% curcuminoid. The average is 3 to 5%. This is concentrated, patented turmeric. Body's ultimate turmeric formula. 50 to 60% off everything at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com has everything you need. Wake Up America Coffee, the great uh, fluoride-free toothpaste, four to five with a little silver iodine, and so many other great products you want to sign up for auto ship on so that you get a 10% additional discount on the next order. I guess it's a 10% discount on that order. Cancel any time, but... It's human action. It's a war. The globalists think if they can shut InfoWars down, they can shut anything down. And the fact that we're still here, you can watch Senate hearings where Senator Blumenthal and others are shaking with hate and fear, saying, we want him shut up. He's not been shut down. He's more influential than ever. And I'm not trying to brag here. I'm saying they fear you, listeners. They fear us. They know the truth. And they know they've sold their soul. They know that they have are not following that path of, of, of empathy that Christ talked about. But real empathy means being strong and fighting tyrants. So we need your financial support, but whatever you do, spread the word. That's free. Infowars.com forward slash show. The lo so Alex Jones is still on. He's still there. And it, it's happening. It's actually gone from crushing us down, making us stronger to now some magic things are happening. I've been advised by people that I don't really get a lot of advice, but... They go, Jones, don't tell people you're getting stronger. Don't, don't. It's not even financial. It, that's the problem area. But influence-wise and, and, and what we're saying, who's listening? I mean, do you think that doesn't make powerful world leaders and, and major thought leaders, when they hear don't listen to Alex Jones, tune in? The fact that we're still here, we're not supposed to be here, folks. They're supposed to shut us down, then lie about us so that we're not on air so they can then build a straw man. But we're still here thanks to you. Because truth contradicts their manufactured narrative. That's right. So liberals always lie. Vox Day and you guys are on fire. Let's finish up this segment. Points you want to make? Um, I think that's pretty much it for what I wanted to talk to, you know, uh, on the show about in terms of, in terms of um, you know, SJWs always lie in the tactical ops on, on how to carry out an operation like this. Vox, what do you think? Well, I think that we should talk about what's likely to happen next with regards to Google and the Panopticon and the the fact that more and more people are understanding how this is playing out. They're understanding that this is not about 
transhumanism. This is not about human progress. This is all about control, and this is all about a return to the you know the the pagan Tower of Babel nonsense feudalism. from pre-Western civilization. It's, no, it's not about feudalism. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, the UN what? says in their documents, we want to return to a global feudal system. We want to return human sacrifice. We want a pagan system. I was just quoting them, but expand. Yeah, the feudalism is actually part of Western civilization. They actually want to go back to a pre-Western civilization. They want to go back to, uh, you know, god kings and slaves. And that's why you see that this this total. Well, sure, that's the Illuminati on, model is 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 absolute godhead for them. Everybody else dumbed out slaves. A, a good word is called cult state. They want to create a cult state. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a cult state, Vox, when the Republicans can't put an ad on Facebook that says we're looking for strong women. Well, they're trying to build it, and they're trying to get there. <laughs> but trying, the last model of a cult it, state but, is Egypt, I think, is the best. And that lasted for 5,000 years. Right. And, and But they're not going to succeed because the whole thing is built on a edifice of debt, and the debt is collapsing. And so you know, there's a... Uh, Piero San Giorgio, who's a, a really great survivalist author, has a book coming out soon called Urban Apocalypse. And he's talking about how the, the, the system that is dependent upon electricity and is dependent upon debt is so fundamentally fragile that there's no chance, not, not a small, you know, not a remote it will probability. Break down. There's, there's no chance it will survive. And so their, their fundamental concepts are based on lies that's why they're creatures of the lie that's why they're all i mean if you look at the the heads of alphabet you look at eric schmidt you look at sergey brin what are they doing they're not working on human progress they're running around trying to figure out how to extend their lives so that they, they don't die and go to hell uh, you know they're running well, that's around it, with and they're building Epps. emergency they're bunkers. They're yeah, bunkers they're building emergency bunkers Jeffrey. yeah it's crazy i mean they're building emergency bunkers in new zealand which the Chinese are going to take over, <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, the the it, it says in the Bible that the the ways of the wise are are going to be confounded, and we're we're seeing that play out right in front of us. The 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 wealthiest, supposedly smartest people. And actually, I got a question for Zach. Mm -hmm. You know, when you watch a television show, a lot of times the first couple seasons are really good, and then the television show just starts to suck after that. And often what it's because the original writers have been replaced by a B team and by a C team. And they sure, they're can't. cashing in on the franchise that's already popular. Right. Would you say that that's happened at companies like Google now? Like the, the, the really smart people that, that made it successful in the beginning, you know, if, if you look at, you know, Sergey Brin and Schmidt are, they're, they're busy running around with celebrities and, and, and sex traffickers like Epstein now, who's actually running the store? I mean, when I look at the, the statements made by the Google executives, I don't get the impression of first-class minds communicating. That's right. They bumble pretty bad in Congress. They, they act disheveled. They're not even good speakers. They, they seem like a rearguard action. Yeah, so, you know, all of the old-timers have pretty much left the company, and they've been replaced. And right now, um, there is, I've noticed with YouTube, a lot of, Chinese infiltration into the company. Oh yeah, and it's 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 they're coming in really fast now. And the thing is, is that there seems to be different criteria that are being used to select, and it's going away from competence and more towards loyalty and ideological subservience. Conformity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you think that the, you think that the diversity and inclusivity push has actually damaged their competence, which actually is is in keeping with what I would have guessed. Yeah, there's there's a really great document that was disclosed in the Project Veritas Google Dumps, and that is the document called Coffee Beans. And it's super weird, and I recommend everyone look at it because, um, in fact, Google says this should not leak out because it could be very damaging, uh, but it, it reduces people to the concept of coffee beans, and they say some coffee beans are not as good as others, but we want to have a blend because with the blend it tastes better. Right, that's the that doesn't surprise me. Um, if I recall correctly, uh, Wired came out with an article about that uh, not long after you after you and Project Veritas broke the news as well. 
Yeah, they, they broke it literally hours before we went live. So the Wired article came out at 6, and then um, the Project Veritas dump came out, I think, around 9 a.m. Well, I wanted to ask you about this. But Google, because, I mean, I would live on Google. It needs to have some rigging and some censorship, but it's totally broken. Nothing works. It's all just hand-selected by them. There's backdoor payments we know going on. It's totally broken. They've just ruined it. Yeah, yeah. There's like product rot, and it's endemic through all the company. And I remember when there used to be a product, a pro, uh, an outage at the company, uh, there'd be this really long like postmortem about what went wrong and how we prevent this again. Now they're having weekly nationwide outages, and in the company they don't even talk about it. It's not even like, oh, this is what happened. They just. So uh, the whole thing stopped working for us. They don't have a purpose driven life. They're just arrogant. They're disconnected. They're censoring. They don't care. Box Day, great job. We appreciate you. I promise, callers, we're going to every single person holding. When we come back, stay with us. We're going right to Ryan and Ronnie on the other side.